celebrate freedom today, we're going to introduce this new song, and it's called Egypt. And I just want to give you a little picture of what this song's about. You know, God's people, the Jewish people, they were in bondage. They were enslaved thousands of years ago to the Egyptians. And God raised up a leader to lead them out of that bondage, out of that slavery. And they got caught between the Egyptian army and the sea. And God split the sea and let them go through into freedom. And you know, God's done the same thing for us now. We were in bondage to sin. We were enslaved to sin, but because Christ came and paid the price for that sin, he died on the cross for you and I, we now are free. We're free from sin and we have freedom in Christ. And so this song is called Egypt. That's what it's about. I hope it blesses you this morning.
takes the throne. Sing this up. Church. My name is Simone, and we are so happy that you are here with us today. If this is your first time joining us or you're simply newer to our church, please grab a Connect card from the back of the seat in front of you and fill that out, or simply text NEW to the number that's right here on the screen. This is just a way for us to connect with you and keep you informed about what's going on in our church. Every month, we partner with Causely to globally reach people with the hope of Jesus. This month, every check-in on Facebook will help fund a surgery for children in impoverished countries Let's do our part to check in now using the hashtag change a life. Your giving is how we remain on mission to helping people find and follow Jesus. You are a part of how we are able to reach our community to bring the hope of the gospel to the lost world. We encourage you to remain faithful in your giving. You can drop your tithes in the offering boxes as you exit the service today, and or you can text Compassion AZ to the number right here on the screen or visit Compassion AZ slash give. Ignite is our summer study that goes deeper into God's word as we take a closer look at our Sunday morning message. This will be every Sunday evening throughout the month of June from 5 to 7 p.m. Child care is provided as well as dinner, and it's all free, so please join us for a night of Ignite starting next week. Tonight, we are going to kick off summer together with a night of fun with our Compassion Church family and friends. This will be a great time of community as we have free food, water slides, indoor volleyball. So invite your friends, family, neighbors to join us tonight here at 6 p.m. We're so excited to hang out with you. Thank you so much for being here with us today, and we hope you enjoy part three of our Unhindered series. Hey everybody, how you doing today? Is everybody glad to be here? Let me hear you. 
Man, I'm so glad you're here on this Memorial Day weekend. How many of you are glad that tonight we're going to party, we're going to have a great time, we're going to eat, we're going to play volleyball, we've got some water slide inflatables for the kiddos, we're going to have an awesome time. I would just say this, we are shocked at the RSVP results that we're getting right now. We have a big crowd of people going to come tonight, so if you want to be a part of a fun and festive family night, I hope that you'll be here for our awesome time together tonight. I'm just glad that you're here on a holiday weekend, right where you should be, man. This is an awesome place to be, and you picked a great weekend to be here. And I just want to say this, man. We're going to have fun tonight. Uh, I can't wait to spike the volleyball. I love volleyball. Any of y'all like to play volleyball? Yep, okay, I see some hands. We're going to have fun, and it's great to have that community. And I think what we're seeing is people really want to have community, and they're looking for that. And so we've got people that don't even come to our church signing up like mad online, ready for a fun time tonight. Also, next Sunday night, we're starting off Sunday Night Ignite. Start your summer off right. We're going to do a Bible study where we dig in deeper. We're going to have round table type discussion where you're able to bring questions and talk about what your thoughts are. I want to hear from you. But we're going to go deeper into the Sunday morning message on Sunday night. There's so much that I can't cover all at one time, so we're going to have a blast last with that next Sunday night, free child care. Parents, free child care. So like for two hours, you can space out. <laughs> you don't even have to listen to the teaching. You just enjoy time away from the little kids, right? That's Sunday night ignite. We're going to have fun next Sunday night. I hope you'll be here. And uh, you know what? I am preaching this message series called Unhindered. It's a lot different from what I'm normally used to, just to be honest with you. Like this Unhindered series is uh, really something that has gone through me, though. I, uh, I kind of struggle a little bit just to be re really like transparent about stuff in my life. So I'm going to give you a heads up today. I'm going to be a little transparent, though, okay? Uh, and talk about some of the things that have hindered me in my past. So hopefully it will help you to get, through, get beyond your past and be unhindered, live a life of freedom by the way, aren't you thankful for the freedoms that we have today in America? Hey, you know what? We should be, yeah. Uh, tomorrow's Memorial Day. We're going to be remembering the uh, fallen soldiers, men and women who gave the ultimate sacrifice so we could meet in religious freedom today. If you're happy about that, thankful for their sacrifice, would you be really loud for them today? Yeah. Hey, uh, there's two pandemics that have been going on. The pandemic of COVID, right? We're sick of that. I'll tell you another one I'm sick of. It's anxiety. The pandemic of anxiety. Anxiety is attacking. Our world, our hearts. There, there's a lot of depression going on. In fact, did you know even before the pandemic broke out, one out of ten Americans, all right? Maybe you'll fall into this. This category, one out of ten Americans said that they struggled with anxiety or some adversity due to depression, some disorder due to depression. That's one out of every ten Americans before the pandemic. It has gone up four times that today, four out of ten Americans say they struggle with anxiety or some difficulty, some disorder from depression. That's 40% of Americans would admit today, man, I'm struggling with anxiety and depression. Wow. And so because of that, we have this series, Unhindered. Uh, I, ju I just want to help people because I know it, it is so pervasive today. So many of us struggle with anxiety or have struggled with uh, depression, some disorder related to all this. And my heart is, man, I want to help us not just come in here today and get rah, 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 let's get excited, let's, let's praise God and, and let me pray a little prayer and then I'll be unhindered all of a sudden. That's great. And I know Jesus can set you free in a moment, in an instant. But what if today, and in this unhindered series, we could really find some healing for our hindered hearts? And today I want to help. Uh, today uh, we're, we're going to be discussing some information from a book called Unhindered by Dr. Charity Byers and Dr. John Walker. 
And it is a, a tool that's being used in an amazing way to help people rewrite their story, to edit their story from being hindered by things that have happened in your past to living the free, full life that Jesus Christ intended for you to live. And it goes right in tune with what we've been studying in the book of John. We'll see that today and give you the Bible today. It's going to be awesome. But today I want to ask you to do something. I'm going to ask you to open your heart up to God and to be a little bit transparent with Him. Just open up to Him and say, God, my heart is uh, hurting, or this is what's on my heart. This is what has been hindering my heart. And today, can we just maybe commit together to, to put the work in, to, to, to say, hey, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to really seek God and his ability to help me rewrite the trajectory of my story. And, and we're going we're gonna to share just how God can do that. Let me, let me just start off by sharing some really personal stuff with you today. And I still don't know why I'm doing this. This is kind of uncomfortable for me. So uh, it won't be for you, okay? But it, it is difficult for me to talk about some of my uh, hindered heart, okay? So, you know, I, I had the worst year of my life in 2017, um, and some of you have heard me talk about my, my mom's passing. You think, man, that was probably Myron's biggest hurt. It actually wasn't. Uh, my mom, uh, her death, that's tough. We were super close, and I'm glad she's in heaven. So uh, she's healed finally, and that's all good. And it was a hard time when she passed about the same time. But in 2017, the biggest hurt of my heart ever was when we had some really uh, some really some really close people in our lives here at the church. I'm just, I'm just being super raw with you today. And they left the church. And, uh, you know, uh, we've all got our, our stuff, right, our hurts. And, and this was really hard for me because we had done life with these people. They had been in our home. We'd been in small group Bible studies together. We had served Jesus together. And it was hard, man. I was, I, I was hurt. My heart was hurt. And by the way, this is why pastors all over America are dropping out of ministry left and right. It's just there's a lot of hurts from stuff like that. Uh, it, it's, it's astounding how many, how many pastors uh, start out but never end up in the ministry. There's just a few. And, and man, I was at that point. I was ready to quit. I was down, and my heart was heavy. My heart was hurt. Uh, and, and, and several people left. And the reason why they left, man, we started doing church uh, differently. When we started Compassion Church, we became Compassion Church about four years ago. And uh, we, we changed the way we did worship, and we updated a lot of stuff, and our programming. We just made a lot of changes. We felt like that's the direction God was leading us. And so when we did that, it's hard for people to change when it comes to church stuff, right? It just is. And, and I, I don't hold any resentment or ill will toward those people. I love them to this day. But how many of you know when people walk out of your life, it just hurts? It's almost like they take a piece of your heart with them when they go. And it's, man, nobody likes that. You've probably experienced that type of hurt in your life where somebody left you or betrayed you or walked out on you. It's just hard, right? I, uh, I would say today that that was a real heart shaper for me when that happened. Uh, a heart shaper is this. Let me give you a, a, a description of the word heart shaper. A heart shaper is this. So it's just a description. What's written on your heart isn't an accident. The words and sentences have been shaped by people and events, both painful and pleasant. All right, so that was a heart shaper for me. <laughs> when, when they left, man, it hurt bad, and it was a heart shaper for me. And what I'd like for you to do is think of a heart shaper. I've made sure there's one of these note cards on every seat, and I want, if you will, please just go along with me today and take one of these cards out. We've made sure that there are pins in every area so that you can readily grab a pin Grab a note card, and it's going to be fun today as we 
seek out and search out the unhindered life. And what I'd like for you to do is think about something in your life that was a heart shaper. And would you write the number one heart shaper of your life? I'm going to give you a graphic. We're going to throw a graphic up there. And I'm going to tell you about some ideas about what heart shapers are. It may be a divorce. It may be uh, the way a, uh, someone mistreated you or abused you early in life. Uh, here's some examples of heart shapers. Uh, critical parent. A major loss in life. A chronic illness. An unanswered prayer. These are examples of heart shapers. Some disappointment. Some, something that shaped your heart to the place it is today. Okay, we've all got them. So write a heart shaper down there, if you will. It's some event, some disappointment, some loss, some heart shaper. And then, uh, not only was that my heart shaper, so so for me, I would write down this heart shaper, man. Uh, when people walked away, that was a heart shaper for me. Now, not only was there a heart shaper for me, but I had a sore spot from those heart shapers. Say, so what's the sore spot? I'm glad you asked. Let me show you what a sore spot is. Here's a description of a sore spot. Because when you have a heart shaper, it leaves a bruise on your heart. It could leave a sore spot, we call it, um, like a blister that's kind of tender. And the sore spot is when you experience heart shapers that don't reflect God's love, wisdom, and strength. They hurt and leave bruises on your heart called sore spots. Anybody got some sore spots, some bruises, some sore spots, a tender blister that's ouch when it gets bumped up against? I'll give you some examples of some sore spots. In fact, in the book Unhindered, there's six common sore spots that I'll give you. Number one is shame. And so maybe something has happened in your life in the past, a heart shaper, and now you feel shame. Maybe uh, that's, that heart shaper was you got fired, and now you feel shame for that. I don't know. Could be. Another sore spot would be uh, guilt. You blame yourself for stuff. It goes right along with that shame. Man, that's, that's bad. That's a sore spot. Uh, it really hurts, doesn't it? And then another sore spot is fear. By the way, this was my sore spot. 2017. People walked out. That was my heart shaper. My sore spot became fear. I was afraid more people would walk out. Man, that, that's no way to live. That was a sore spot. So anytime there was a problem or a hard decision to make, my heart would be gripped by fear, be bumped up against, and I'd get anxiety a little bit. I was afraid it'd happen again. Fear. That's a bad sore spot. By the way, that's Nicodemus' sore spot. Nicodemus, we'll see today in John chapter 3, had a sore spot that he would never be good enough to be accepted by God. He, was, he thought, man, I'll, if, if I'm not good enough, people won't like me. His sore spot was fear too. So your sore spot might be shame, fear, inadequacy. Maybe you have insecurities because of something that happened in your past. Maybe you have a sense of rejection. That's another sore spot. And what I'm wanting you to do is think of your sore spot. Uh, we've already said your heart shaper, okay? Something in your past. And now think of a sore spot, something that hurts when it gets bumped up against. Maybe it's fear. Maybe it's shame, inadequacy, sense of rejection, feeling unvalued. People don't value me now. You feel that way. Uh, maybe uh, it could even result in pride as a sore spot. Your pride. Um, so I had... This heart shaper, people left. My sore spot was fear. It could happen again. I've got to make every decision just right. It's all on me. And if I don't do just right, if I'm not perfect, it could happen again. And then it goes from having a heart shaper to sore spot. And the next thing I'd like for you to write down is the outcome. Write the word outcome, and then we're going to try to identify an outcome in your life. And what you're doing now, you're putting in work to identify and to say, you know what, I'm going to name it. And once you identify and acknowledge, then you can start working on it. 
And when you realize, man, it's liberating to realize, okay, here's my heart shaper, and here's the sore spot, and now we're going to talk about the outcome. Let me show you uh, the description of sore spot or of outcome. Outcome is negative behavior, negative behavior that results from unhealed sore spots, such as depression, anxiety. Conflicting relationships. So an outcome of all of your trauma, right, your heart shapers, it ends up coming to this outcome of, man, now I don't get along with people. I snap at people. Or maybe you don't outwardly express with, with angry outbursts. That's a possibility. Maybe you stonewall and you build up resentment and bitterness. And the outcome for you is, man, I'm never going to talk to them again. I'm not going to have close relationships. You see, an outcome might be conflicting relationships, anxiety, distance from God, drinking too much, resentment, bitterness. So what I'd like for you to do, write heart shaper, and then your heart shaper, and then write your sore spots. Write the word sore spot, two of them, sore spot. Write your sore spot, and then, and I know it's, it doesn't have to be neat. The special thing about that little card is nothing about the card, but what comes out of your heart to that pen, and you write it, and then you identi- when you're identifying your heart shaper, your sore spot, and then an outcome. Write an out, write the word outcome, and write out something that is a negative outcome in your life. You see, what I want to do is not just surface level here. We're, we're trying to go deep today, and to see your heart go from hindered to unhindered, and And it could be a process, like it was for Nicodemus. Nicodemus was a guy who met Jesus in John chapter 3. And we see him talking to Jesus, having this unhindering, not just moment, it was a process. Over time, we see him getting stronger and stronger in his faith, like we did last week. So, heart shaper, sore spot, and outcome. And one big reason that you're... Uh, for your outcome, uh, for your negative behaviors, the reason why you snap at your kids and you snap at your spouse and you, you're snappy with your coworkers, or, or you resent that person from your past and you won't talk to them and you hold it against them and you won't let go, that, that outcome of drinking too much, coping with substance abuse. By the way, did you know that since covid hit, before then even, substance abuse and suicide were already really high in America. It's sad, right? After COVID, substance abuse and suicide have skyrocketed. And these are outcomes from heart shapers that never get healed, sore spots that never get healed. And today, one big reason for your outcomes, your negative behaviors, is because of little t truths that you have come to believe. Little t truths that you have come to believe about yourself and about life. And I want to I want to just share with you what little t truths are. Okay, I know this is a lot different of a message today. It's different for me, but I think it's going to be really impactful. And little t truths are your ways of thinking that you develop based on your experiences. All right, so like this happened to me, so now my belief is this. Okay, so let, let, me, let me go back. And they can be really dangerous and unhealthy. Uh, your little T truths that you believe. Let me give you some examples of little T truths, okay, just so you get, get you might want to write your little T truth down, one of them. Uh, here's some examples. Uh, from your experiences, you've learned to believe these Little lies, little t truths. People would never talk to me again if they n- knew that about me. So you got this little t truth. And by the way, what you do to combat that little t truth is like you keep secrets. And that's awful for you to hold it in. Because you believe people would never talk to me again if they knew about me. And then another little T truth is I have nothing to offer. I'm not valuable. Because maybe of some failure in your past, now you think, man, I'm just worthless. And you've told yourself, I really have no value. I'm just going to back out of life. Or how about this? Some people, a little T truth is I'm stupid. 
I'm not good enough. I'm not smart enough. A little T truth is the worst is going to happen. This is, this is what happens when you're gripped by fear. Maybe something bad has happened in your life, and now every time you're triggered, you think the worst thing's going to happen again. It's like the chicken little philosophy that the sky is falling. And you've told yourself these little T truth that the sky is falling, everything's going to go downhill from here, and there's no hope. And you've believed that that's what you've come to believe, that everything's bad and, and everything's downhill. It's not going to go good. The worst is going to happen. And then another little T truth would be, uh, nobody likes me. Nobody wants me. I'm just not good enough. And so we tell ourselves these little T truths. Dr. Caroline Leaf, she is a Christian neuroscientist. And she said in her book, who switched off my brain? In her book, Who Switched Off My Brain? She said, our toxic thinking is like poison. You see, it's very unhealthy when you begin to believe these little T truths about yourself and about life and about God. It's toxic. She said, it's toxic and it's like poison. And 85 to 95 percent of all mental and physical problems come from our belief of little t truths that aren't even true. It's unhealthy to believe these little lies that the devil feeds us and that we learn from our experiences. Those are little t truths. And when you have little t truths like those, then, then you have these things called small s strategies. Small s strategies. And small s strategies are, here's a description of small s strategies. Life strategies based on little t truths. So your little t truths, these little things that you believe about yourself. I'm not good enough. No one likes me. No one would hang out with me if they knew about me. Everything's downhill from here. All these bad things that you believe, these negative little lies, little t truths, cause you to try to cope with small s strategies. Life strategies based on little t truths. We use small s strategies to try to cope with the little t truths that we believe. Let me give you some examples of small s strategies. You might avoid risks now because you failed in the past, and now I'm not going to put myself out there ever again. That's a small s strategy. I'm, here's my strategy. I'm not going to feel that pain again because I'm not even going to try. A small s strategy is avoiding risk. Another one, this is a bad one, is I'm going to avoid people because people have hurt me. People are bad. We get this little t truth. People are bad. People will hurt me. God did me wrong. So now we say I'm going to avoid people. I'm going to stay away from church. Do you see that little strategy there? And we know that when you isolate, that is detrimental to your mental, spiritual, and emotional well-being. Keep secrets. That's another small s strategy. Because you think, oh, if they knew what I did, they would not be my friend anymore. So I'm going to keep secrets. This is my new strategy. I'm not going to tell anybody about it. And what that does is start eating you from the inside out. We know that's not healthy, keeping secrets. You know what? Secrecy is the enemy of intimacy. And right now, you may be having difficulty in your intimate life. You're not intimate with anybody because you've been keeping secrets. Secrecy is the enemy of intimacy. And this was Nicodemus, by the way. Nicodemus had all these thoughts about who Jesus was. Could he be the Messiah? He had all these thoughts about Jesus, but he wouldn't dare tell anybody. That's why he came at night. He didn't want anybody to know that he started to believe in Jesus because his friends would write him out of their lives. They said, Nicodemus, you're speaking blasphemy. There's no way. And so he kept it all in, and he couldn't sleep at night. Now, here's one small s strategy that I was big on in 2017. Remember, my heart shaper, people walked out. My sore spot, I was fearful that it would happen again. The outcome was anxiety. I would lie awake at night. I would wake up in the middle of the night with anxiety. Now, I, I'm not afraid to share that with you. I'm embarrassed, but yeah, it is what it is. In the middle of the night, I felt like there was uh, a supreme pizza exploding in my, in my gut, right? 
It just, it, and it wasn't something that I ate. It was what was eating me. It was anxiety. And then I finally drift back to sleep for an hour maybe. And then in the morning when my feet hit the floor and I woke up, it'd be there again. It's the first thing I thought about. Anybody ever been there? That's no way to live. You don't have to live that way. You don't have to live that hindered life. And so, so my small S strategy for all that little t truth that, oh, Myron, your sermon has to be perfect or no one's ever going to come back again. Do you know that puts a lot of pressure on a person? I was under so much pressure, so much anxiety. So my small S strategy was achieve, win, and perform. Work harder to bring the results. Because I was fearful, oh, we'll never get back to that level where we were. And by the way, we did. I have to share that. We just probably shown part of my personality that I'm even saying this right now. But you know what? We did. We got back. And in February 2020, we were more than we had ever been before. We averaged more that month. <laughs> and then God kept me in check. He said, now I'm going to give you COVID. <laughs> right? Not me, but the, the world. <laughs> COVID. And so we've been trying to build back and praise God. We're building back toward that in a healthy way. <laughs> yeah, so that was my small S strategy. And then another small S strategy is reject others before they reject you. The, the, maybe you could write down a small S strategy that you developed. And one is that <laughs> maybe this is for you. I'm going to reject them before they have an opportunity to reject me, right? And you write yourself out of meaningful relationships. They may never reject you, but you're on guard and you're in an unhealthy way. You're hindered and you say, I'm just going to write them off because I'm afraid that they're not going to like me anymore. And I'm going to go ahead and not like them anymore first. <laughs> How stupid is that, right? But it happens. Yeah, we become bitter, resentful, and write people out of our lives. You know... God's got a better way of living for you. Small S strategies have a cure. Little T truths have a cure, and they're called big T truths. Big T truth, actually. And here's what big T truth is, a description of big T truth. God's big T truth deserves ultimate authority over our imperfect lessons from our experiences and can free your hindered heart. And we're going to see Jesus in our story in John chapter 3. Jesus is going to unhinder Nicodemus' heart, or at least get him on that path to an unhindered heart, by giving him big T truth. We'll see that. All right, let's catch up in the story. John chapter 2, verse 24. John chapter 2, verse 24. The first thing I want you to see from this text is God knows your heart. God knows if your heart is hindered, hurting, or if it's healthy and unhindered. God knows, right? And so we learn that in John chapter 2. We learn the omniscience, the all-knowing nature of God. He knows your heart, all right? He knows before you wrote down your heart shaper, he knew what your heart shaper was. And this is what the Bible says. But Jesus, on his part, did not entrust himself to them because he knew all people. And let me give you the context. Jesus had been doing miracles left and right. He was in the zone in Jerusalem. And people started flocking toward him, but he knew what was in their heart. He knew that the same people that were saying, Jesus, oh, wow, this is awesome, would be the same people that would one day say, crucify him, crucify him. All right, so Jesus knew their heart, and check it out, and needed no one to bear witness about man. And here's a great universal truth. He himself knew what was in man. And today, God knows what is in your heart. And that brings us great comfort. God knows what's hindering your heart, and he's able to help free you and help you to live the unhindered life that we long for. And then he gives us an example of this. So he states this at the end of John chapter 2, and we continue reading in John chapter 3, and we find out that he knew what was in Nicodemus' heart. John chapter 3, verse 1. Now there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. So this was a very religious person. They believed keeping the law would earn their salvation. They were really confused about how to gain acceptance with God. They 
they felt like they had to keep the law perfectly in order to earn their own salvation. And this man came to Jesus by night. This is Nicodemus. We call him Nick at night because he comes to Jesus by night. He's stressed out. He's had heart shaper, the heart shaper of legalism where he thinks he's got to earn his salvation. He's had the sore spot of fear. He's afraid that if he's not perfect, God's going to strike him dead. And he's never going to have the kingdom of God. He's never going to be a part of heaven. And then he's got this terrible anxiety that's keeping him up at night as his outcome. And he says, Rabbi, or Master Teacher, we know that you are a teacher come from God. For no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Here, this is where we see Jesus knowing the heart of Nicodemus. Nicodemus says one thing, but Jesus totally goes to the heart of what Nicodemus really needs. He knows Nicodemus is hindered, and he says, okay, Nicodemus, I heard you, but let me address the real issue of your heart. And this was the real issue. Jesus said to him, truly, truly, I say unto you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus thought as a Jew, if he kept the law, he was part of the family of God. He was born into the right nation. He was born as a, he's a Pharisee. He, he could keep the law and earn his salvation. Jesus said, no, that's not it at all. You've got to be born again. And what do we mean by born again? We talked about this last week. In order to be born again, you have to be born once, right? The first birth is when you have your birthday, you're born. I was born on June 7th. I was born into the Scott family. Ron Scott became my dad that day. On my spiritual birthday, my second birthday, when I was born again, was May 22nd. And as a little boy on May 22nd, I was born into the family of God. That's what it means to be born again. By faith, I believed in Jesus, and God became my heavenly father. That's why everybody needs two births, because Jesus said you've got to be born again. So Jesus knew Nicodemus' heart, and he goes straight for his heart. Now, the way he unhindered Nicodemus' heart was by giving him big T truths. Remember, these are God's truths that supersede the little t truths of our experience. And he does this by giving him the greatest verse that we know of in all the Bible, right? The golden verse of the Bible, John 3, 16. Do you know who heard that verse the first time? Nicodemus. Did you realize that when Jesus spoke John 3, 16, he was talking to Nicodemus? He was unhindering this guy's heart. He said, man, I see in your heart you don't know about the love of God. You think it's all up to you to be perfect, and you've got to attain favor by being a keeper of the law perfectly. But let me tell you, Nicodemus, it's not that at all. I love you. I love you so much, I'm going to die for you on the cross. And so this is the big T truth that starts liberating Nicodemus. Here it is. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. We get this idea that God only loves us if we're perfect, that if we're bad, then God stops loving us. Let me remind us today that God loves you unconditionally. Let me explain that. I've got four sons. Sometimes I walk in their room at night when they're quiet and they're asleep, and I just see them sleeping there, man. And I'm like, man, I love them so much. Now, I don't love my kids. Boys, only if they score points in their basketball game that day, right? I don't love my boys just because they make good grades. I love my kids because, man, I, I really have a relationship with them. I care about them. I told Julia a while back, I said, you know what? If I didn't have any friends in the world, I'd be okay because I got four boys. I love hanging out with them. We could go on road trips together, man. I could just have fun. I love them. I just want to be with them. I like my relationship with them. I'm crazy about them. And if they mess up, I'm not there to beat them with a baseball bat. I'm there to help them and to help them teach them, train them, correct them through problems. And we get the idea oftentimes that God is out to get us, that he is this big bully in the sky with a baseball bat ready to strike us down if we do wrong. 
What a bad misconception about the nature of our God. I, uh, I love this next big T truth that Jesus gives to Nicodemus. John chapter 3 verse 17 is amazing. So remember, Nicodemus has all these little T truths. I've got to be perfect. He's got, he's got this anxiety that if I'm not just right, people are not going to like me. God's not going to like me. And Jesus is there unhindering Nicodemus' heart with big T truths. Like this. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world through him could be saved. <laughs> he says, Nicodemus, you've got God all wrong. Let me give you some big T truth and correct your little true thinking God loves you and he's not out to destroy you I want to give you I want to give you uh, some a, a tool a really quick tool today to help you this week and as you start trying to allow God to rewrite your story as you start partnering with God and you guys you and Jesus take the pen and you start trying to live that unhindered life and rewrite how your story is going to look in the future to edit your story, here's a tool that'll help you. It's tool time, all right? Let me give you a tool that's going to help you this week. Number one is, it's, a, it's just a, a tool. It's, it's three things. Stop, think, and pray. Stop, think, and pray. And so here's the, here's the deal. When you are triggered this week to revert back to your old way of thinking, when your sore spot gets bumped and you start being fearful and chicken little, oh, it's going to all go south from here. They're not going to like me and I'm not valuable. Stop. I'm not going to revert to that behavior. I'm not going to believe those lies anymore. I'm valuable in the, pre I am valuable as a child of God. He loves me. So stop, say, I'm not going to revert, and then think. And what do we think about in that moment? When we're triggered and our short spot gets bumped, we stop, and then we think about the big T truths. We think, you know what? God does love me. He wants a relationship with me. He thinks I'm special enough that he would die on the cross for me. God loves me. He's not out to get me. He's got a bright future for me. Everything's not going downhill. And I'm not going to live in fear anymore. I'm going to live in faith because of God's truth. So we stop. And this will help you. This is a tool that's going to help you this week. Stop, think, and then pray. Stop, think, pray. And this is what you pray. Can I just share with you just something like I would do? When, when, when I have an attack of anxiety, this is, how, this is a, a, an example of how I might would pray. God... I feel, I feel kind of triggered right now. I, you know, God, I struggle with how I felt because people left. and I really need your help right now. I know you love me and you care about me. I claim those promises. I know I'm your child, and I'm not going to forget it, God. Would you please help me through this? And you pray. You just simply tell God about that sore spot that you're, man, it just got bumped again, God. But I don't want to revert back. I'm claiming your truth today. I want to live the unhindered life. I, I want to stop being snappy with my spouse. I want to stop drinking too much to cope with the pain. I don't want to go back to that coping mechanism. God, I, I'm asking you for healing. And God, the great thing about God is he's speaking to your heart right now. He you can feel it in your soul because there's a loving God in heaven who is right now probing your heart. God knows your heart. He knows your sore spots. He knows your heart shapers and the outcomes that they're ugly and the, the little T truths that you've been believing, your little S strategies to try to cope with them. He's saying, I got the answers. Here's some big T truth for you. Not only does God know about your heart, God speaks to your heart. And I'm going to close with this verse, John 3, verse 8. John chapter 3, verse 8. 
says something really significant about God. The wind, he says, Nicodemus, the wind blows where it wishes. And this is how I just see it all going down in, in my sanctified imagination. Jesus and Nicodemus are sitting under the moonlight in the courtyard of the home where Jesus was staying. And they're sitting there at a little cafe type scene. This is my mind anyway. Across the table from each other. And the wind picks up and blows. All of a sudden, some leaves start swirling around in the wind. And Jesus, the master teacher, says, see that wind, Nicodemus? You can hear it. You can see its effects. But you, you really can't see the wind. But Nicodemus, do you believe in the wind? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I believe in the wind. One time, one time I, I was going into my backyard and I looked out in the pool. And our pool umbrella, the patio umbrella, was in the pool. Now, how'd it get there? How did, oh, yeah, the, the wind blew it in there. I remember we had a strong wind, or, yep, the wind blew it in there. I didn't see the wind, but I believed it. And Jesus says, Nicodemus, you can't see my spirit, but you can hear the still, small voice. He says, the wind blows where it wishes, and you hear Listen, you hear it sound. And the great thing is God knows your heart. The second thing is God speaks to your heart today. Can you hear it? You can't see it, but you can feel the presence of God saying, I want to unhinder you. I want to help you. And here's what I'm asking you to do. Will you say, God, give me the pen. I'm ready to do the work. I see my heart shapers. I want a different outcome. God, I don't want to act like that anymore. And will you begin to partner with Jesus so you can rewrite your story? You can be unhindered from the burdens of your past so you can live the life that you've dreamed of. Can you hear him speaking to your heart? Would you just say, here's what I want everybody in the room to say, yes, God. I hear your heart. I hear you speaking to my heart. And I'm saying yes to you. God, let's rewrite this story. I want to change the next chapter. Will you edit my story? From this moment on, God wants to help you live the unhindered life. Our heads are bowed. I want you to pray. I just want you to say, would you maybe pray something like this? God. I don't want to live that way anymore. I pray you'd help me with my heart shapers. They hurt bad. I've got a sore spot and it gets bumped, God, but it's causing these crazy outcomes. I'm drinking too much. I'm ang I've got anxiety out the wazoo. I just am going, God, would you help me with all this? God, that person really hurt me, but I know you love me. Would you pray right now? Can you, can you hear him, the Holy Spirit of God, calling out to you? He loves you, and he speaks to you today. He calls you to the unhindered life of freedom. And Jesus purchased your freedom on the cross. And you can live in faith today, knowing God is going to give you strength to live the unhindered life. Would you pray with me? Father, we come before you. We're not hiding our flaws, our mistakes, our misconceptions, our heartaches. We bring you our hurts right now. Our heart shapers, the sore spots. And we ask for healing. We say, yes, God, we, we will partner with you starting today to live the unhindered life together. In Jesus' name we pray. We don't have to fear anymore. How many of you are glad out there today? Would you put your hands together? If you don't have to fear the future, you know God is going to help rewrite your story. Let's all stand together. I want to tell you, we don't live in fear. We can trust God to help us live the life that we long for. God bless you guys. Let's live the unhindered life.
Those that fly by day, 10,000 may fall, but we, we will be. Have a great Sunday. We'll see you.